この体じゃこのくらいの動きが限界だなこいつ終わりだ義足やろ The FA 78 Full Armored Gundam Thunderbolt version. Not to be confused with the FA 78 1, if you're looking for them. This suit gained the most notoriety due to the spectacular Thunderbolt anime, which I believe to summarize it in a simpler sense is think Cowboy Bebop with Gundams. This mobile suit is cold, callous, brutal, and designed to be highly durable as well as highly maneuverable. That's what the Wikipedia says, at least. It is nothing short of a beautiful monster, I'd like to say. Looking at it, it is truly ominous. And the whole idea behind the paint job I added to it was to make this mobile suit much darker than what was the suggested colors. I wanted it to be as cold as possible, to give that dead sort of look. To see this mobile suit is to die if you're a Xeon pilot. Uh, please never mind the shaking in the background. My dog was running around and she has a lot of energy. She's a happy little poppy. This kit is fantastic to look at. Not so much to build. Maybe it's less of a pain in the ass if you're building it and not painting it. But as you can see, I painted my kit. Therefore, I can't speak from just snapping it together. By the way, I don't usually snap my kits together before painting. While panel lining, yes, I'd snap a kit together and then primer it to get an idea of how I want my panel lines to go. I will say that this is a very nice kit for display, and that's about it. The full armor Gundam's designs, though an engineering marvel, leaves a lot to be desired. Simply put, the damn thing keeps falling to pieces, and it is very easy to lose pieces on this kit. You have no idea. I lost two, actually. One for the upper shoulder blaster and one for the hand cannons. It really sucks ass. And I can't seem to find them. That damn dog. I don't know what she did, but she got two of them and ran like the wind. And you'll find that I didn't pose this kit much for this review. Simply because when I tried to, it fell to pieces. This is something no other reviewer touched on. Nobody warned me, except for like people on forums and whatnot. They were like, oh yeah, that's a really finicky kit to work with. But when you go to like the YouTube. Gunpla reviewers that talk about this kit, they make it seem like it's not that bad, except for one dude. I can't remember the hell his name was, but his kit was falling to pieces in his hands. He was so miffed with the thing, he didn't even bother putting the trash bag on the joints, which is another bone of contingent for me. These little plastic bag things blow ass. They suck. I wanted to do a lot more customization work, but since I have a lot of obligations, it had to go out of the window. My original plan was to water base paint it. And give some shades and tones. And then I was just kind of like, screw it. The other idea would have been to add dust features and pigmentation. Once again, screw it. Because working with these little bags is a pain. It's almost not worth the effort. It's not like it's impossible, but it does take more effort on most people's parts. And since I was building this, I figured I wanted the full look overall. I did skim out on time saving, I did use the included camera stickers. Simply because I wasn't in the mood to mask off a lot of pieces, paint them black, paint it mirror chrome, then hit it with a green clear coat to try and get that right tinge I wanted. I just don't have the time. It's not a luxury. This kit, like all Verkaz, is rife with way too many water slide decals to the point of where it's just kind of like I was beginning to get annoyed with it. It was just like, ugh. And since the tonal color variations I was going with on this kit required multiple layers of paint, it led to a very rough surface at times. And after a while of sanding everything down, 800 grit to 1000 grit to try and get it smooth enough for the next layer of paint so it's not too rough, I was just like to hell with it. This kit's supposed to look like it's been through hell in a handbasket. Well, actually, Leo Fleming got it and then went through hell in the handbasket, but point being, you know, it was pristine when he had his hands on it. So I wanted it to look tough and ready for action, but not too pristine. No, I didn't add any weathering. I apologize. Many of the gimmicks here are, uh, you know, the gimmicks. I didn't even touch on the feet gimmicks. I may show one area where they're there. Uh, the armor, the outer armor, putting it together, not too bad. Honestly, I'd say there was a lot of forethought on Bandai's part. The outer armor does click into place well enough to where even if you paint, it won't scratch anything. It's very snug. 
but the drawback is this. The side skirts, you can't flip them back around once you put the little missiles on the uh, pods. I didn't even show it because I was taking the kit apart to uh, do without the armor, and it fell to pieces. And I was just like, oh my god, I'm not doing this, dude. I'm not going to lose these tiny little missiles because they're real small. They're like real grade small in my opinion. I'm not going through that and then have the dog run in and steal a piece and I'd really lose my shit. Honestly, this is a very, very flimsy kit. It really is. As beautiful as it is to look at, as dynamic, as interesting, as eye-catching as this kit is, it sucks to handle. Which makes reviewing it hard because people want to see poses. They want to see the thing in these sort of movements. And it's like, well, you know, I don't really want to pose this thing because every time I do something else pops off. And it becomes very annoying. And it's sad, really, because it's such a brilliant design. But the execution leaves a lot to be desired. And I'm pretty sure Bandai or Katoki, whether you want to call it the Verka or the version KA, I don't care any which way. Point being, they probably built it knowing that most people who are going to get this were just going to display it. I'm one of those type of guys. I like to paint the kit and maybe put it in a pose once in a blue moon. Other than that, I do not fiddle with these whatsoever, nor do I leave them out to the elements. I prefer them inside of glass displays. So the most I had to worry about is light dusting rather than, you know, having your figure look like it's been in a sand dune after like a few months. The cockpit figure is probably one of the smallest pilot figures I've ever painted. You can look at this thing right here versus the 1-100 scale Bandai official crew figures and notice Leo Fleming looks like uh, a child in comparison to the size. I've noticed this a lot about Bandai's 1-100 scale kits. It leads me to wonder if it's not really 1-100 scale, you know? The Dynamis had the same exact problem. Lock on inside of the cockpit was so tiny it was ridiculous he was just like child size next to his outside figure it's mind numbing the decals for the windows on the core fighter suck i put them on and when i was waiting for them to dry it just kept coming off even with my squeegee tool and at that point i was just like you know what the hell with it as well as my other <laughs> decals came off like I put them on and they just came off so easily so I couldn't even get to doing one more clear coat to lock them in place and at that point after it happened four times I decided I wasn't going to try and put any more decals on the thing it's a real pain in the scrotum the cool gimmick with this is not only the claw like things that come out I don't even recall him being able to do that with his core fighter he didn't even get out of the core fighter in that final fight with the uh, Psycho Zaku. What, 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 I don't even know where this thing came from. I don't even know if it's really canon because I don't recall seeing it. But the cool thing is you can fiddle with the back, flip it around, and then Leo Fleming is now sitting upright position to put inside of the Gundam. Whoopee, I guess. I mean, whatever. It's not like it's the coolest core fighter ever. But I will say this. It might be nice to have it on an outside display, but the drawback is if you don't have it inside the Gundam, the connection is much more flimsy between the top half and the bottom half of this kit, especially when you put it in full armor Gundam mode. So it's kind of a catch-22. Have it out and look cool or stuff it inside there because it will hold your kit together better. It's really annoying, dude. You have no idea how many times this kit has like slid in half on me. Like I try and do something with it, open up a few rockets, and then one part just slides from the other. It, it's mind numbing. This whole kit build is actually mind numbing. It's not the best inner frame I've ever come across. And I guess that's probably due to the fact that you have to put this plastic bag crap on. So Bandai probably thought, oh, well, you don't need to have that many details in here. Let's just use the plastic bags to hide all of that. Which isn't really cool, because the plastic bags suck. There's no other way to put it. It's tedious, it's annoying, it blows ass. The weapons, they're okay. That's the best way I could put it. They're not that amazing, not that awe-inspiring. You'll notice I didn't put the decals on the launcher pods. 
because I was just kind of getting tired of the build itself. I was becoming lethargic at points because there's so many tiny, tiny pieces that require paint that it's just like, oh, and they're easy to lose track of. I can't believe how many of them are so small, especially the red parts, or should I say the wine red? Uh, here I added the, <laughs> I added what happened when I was trying to do some more posing with the figure. <laughs> it fell apart, right? And I just sat it down. It's just like, screw this. Uh, the back fuel pods, dude, those become loose so easily. So be careful with them. Oh, oh God, don't get me started on the included stand. It is a piece of trash. The included stand was originally made for the Wing Zero One. As you're 100% sure, if you don't know, for those who aren't into Gunpla, the Wing Zero One Master Grade is so much smaller and lighter than the full armored Verka. It's not even funny. This may make sense with a wing kit because they're like practically 1 144th scale. But to put it on the full armor Gundam is ridiculous. It can't support the weight. If you don't bother to buy an extra $10 stand for this thing, you're in for a rude awakening because at some point it's going to fall. Overall consensus, I threw it inside of my lighting booth because I figured different lighting to show the tonal variations of my painting for those of you interested. It is a cool looking model kit when painted and decaled up. There is no doubt about it. This is imposing. This is a centerpiece. This is something you wouldn't mind having in an acrylic case sitting on your desk at work because it just lets everyone know you mean business, even though you watch anime. On the other hand, the build sucks. Flimsy, falls apart easily. Tiny parts that you can lose if you are not, if you aren't diligent, you can lose them. I made one simple mistake. A piece of my shirt caught onto like a, one of the bins because it separate the parts of painting. It fell over, poof, be gone. It's like they've disappeared into the ether. I was never so upset. Oh, by the way, that also reminds me. Damn near forgot, because I was so angry talking about this mobile suit kit. I love it, but I also hate it. I'm giving this away. That was another reason why I didn't fiddle with it much, because if I did, I could scratch paint. Didn't really scratch paint, but I was worried. And I was also worried about losing more parts. So, the winner of this mobile suit kit for my patron giveaway, surprise, is... uh. Cosmic Guardian. Bing, bang, boom. Uh, I guess I'll contact you on Patreon because uh, I don't even know if you watch this. Probably don't. You know, that happens. And uh, thank you all for uh, checking out my channel. And uh, this has been an honest review of an awesome yet painfully fragile kit. <laughs>